one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Delusions of Grandeur. I am your host, David Streggy, and here in the room with me, I have Boris. How are you Hi. doing today? Fine, thank you. <laughs> How are you? So today we're going on about a film that has something to do with your dreams. Well, maybe not your dreams, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> about possible dreams that may actually come true. So, um, so today's film, uh, well, why don't you tell me about today's uh, 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 film? Um, uh, oh, Boris, uh, and uh, uh, apparently it's uh, Dreamwalkers, correct? Uh, yes, uh, Dreamwalkers, uh, the very first movie directed by John Bowker, the Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, the of course, director. That, that's that's the cover that you made, correct? Uh, yes, yes, uh, I made it. Well, it's uh, the front cover I made is uh, based on an uh, old design by Joe Sherlock, which I have printed right here. Although this is not really a VHS copy, I just printed this cover for. Uh, some other project, uh, but yeah, uh, this is what uh, Joe Sherlock's original design uh, looked like. Uh, so this must and, be actually uh, your design that I have. Uh, well, yeah, I uh, I recreated it from uh, screenshots in the, the movie, but uh, I used uh, I used Joe Sherlock's uh, work as a reference uh, <laughs> while designing the front cover. Although uh, the backside is uh, completely mine, <laughs> <laughs> whereas this is the backside of his. So, oh uh, yeah, well uh, I also made uh, that one and uh, I think Joe printed this one for you but later <laughs> on I uh, I modified it a bit and made it look like this but uh, maybe I forgot <laughs> to send him the updated version I'm not sure <laughs> well uh, so John Bowker uh, directed this film in two th uh, in the year 2000. Um, uh, something like that, yeah. And uh, I'm just going to go off of uh, uh, IMD. Well, IMDb doesn't tell us what the plot is. So I'm going to go off the back of the DVD um, as to kind of a little synopsis. So a, okay. uh, so, so a mysterious woman named Tarnia often appears in Paul's dreams. In every one of those dreams, he has romantic families, uh, feelings for her. And because of her, he tries to develop a DCR, what is considered a dream cassette recorder. But at one occasion, something goes wrong with the machine and Paul gets stuck in the dream, unable to wake up. Join him as he runs through the, four, uh, the longest and scariest nightmare of his life. Oh. So, going off of that basis, uh, and uh, seeing this film again, what was your first uh, first reaction to this film, and what was your first experience like watching Dreamwalkers? Well, uh, it was a, a really great experience, because uh, I actually have... Uh, history with this movie as it was uh, unreleased before uh, I managed to obtain a copy. From what I heard, uh, many people uh, asked uh, John Bowker to release this movie since it was made, but uh, it never happened uh, until 2013 when I made contact to Joe Sherlock and uh, uh, reached out about Dreamwalkers because, uh, as I probably mentioned in our previous conversations, I wanted to complete the collection of movies with this actress Felicia Pandolfi, and I missed Dreamwalkers in the collection. 
and uh, Joe Sherlock uh, asked John Bowker for permission to make a DVD copy for me and uh, somehow Mr. Bowker said yes and uh, uh, the movie was copied from VHS to DVD at first only for me but then uh, once a DVD copy existed, uh, John allowed Joe to make copies for other people who were interested. So uh, that uh, made this movie very special to me. And aside of that, okay, sorry, I started to ramble about the history now. But speaking of the movie itself, I found it uh, very impressive. I think it's... Uh, one of the most imaginative uh, stories in uh, of all John Bowker's movies. Well, it's not necessarily a regular run-of-the-mill horror th uh, uh, film. I mean, it's got elements of horror, but it's got more of like a fantasy, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons kind of a feel to uh, to it, where where it it, it where kind of like a Lord of the Rings kind of a, 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 a or a Middle Earth, you know, other realm, uh, the, uh, like Miss, uh, I mean, uh, so we have a character by the name of Paul, um, yes. who is played by Eric Singer. Uh, correct. And not the Beastmaster Eric Singer, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but this, uh, uh, this is an independent, uh, uh, a young man who um, is apparently trying to perfect how to record his dreams because he is, seems to have this recurring dreams uh, of a man in black who oh. uh, who uh, tends to fight with him and a, a woman that uh, that he he knows in his mind and his and in his heart is his wife but when he wakes back up to reality, um, <laughs> she is not there. And uh, so he is trying to make this elaborate thing from VHS recording devices <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to record his dreams. So what, um, when you first saw th uh, this, what was your reaction to it? Uh, I mean, uh, how? Uh, I, I I mean, I know that it it meant a lot to you be, uh, because of your history with it. But um, once you saw it, mm. what did you think of the story? What did you think about the characters? Well, I uh, actually liked the story and characters a lot. Like I said, in my opinion, this is one of the uh, most uh, creative stories uh, John Bowker has ever written and made into a movie. I generally like the topic of dreams and uh, this movie has uh, its own uh, envisionment of the dream world and I think I haven't seen uh, such an interpretation of the dream world in any other movie I, uh, I had ever seen before. So here we have uh, uh, a dream world that is actually a world a world of its own, like an alternate dimension, not just something that happens in our heads. And it's uh, controlled by uh, three men. There is uh, a man in green, also known as Mig, played by Joe Sherlock. Uh, he, is, uh, he is the creator of beautiful dreams and we have uh, Coben, played by Rob Miracle. He is uh, the nightmare creator. And Mig and Coben are working for the Dream Wizard. He is the, uh, the main master of the Dream World. And he usually uh, makes sure that uh, neither Mig nor Coben uh, abuse their power. So but, there uh, are rules within this uh, dream dimension where there are two different sides, uh, 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 apparently, where, uh, where they cannot interact with each, uh, with each other's dreams. They, uh, they, they have their own rules that they have to follow and, and uh, uh, whatnot. And uh, what we see happen is that uh, our, our Mr. Coban 
is kind yes. of a trickster, isn't he? Uh, yeah, uh, he's actually uh, a quite evil character. Like uh, he, when he gets people into his nightmares, he even tries to kill them in some cases, uh, which in the story of this movie is implied that uh, if someone dies in a dream, they also die in real life too. But in spite of that, uh, Coben still tries to kill them, especially the main character, Paul. As far as I understood, he held uh, a special grudge against Paul because Paul was never afraid of his nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the real world, um, Paul has a friend by the name of Brandy, um, and um, she ultimately gets sucked into this dream world as well a as a kind of a way to uh, uh, for Coban to bring him into his nightmare world to uh, 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 to use her to seduce him into. Uh, coming over to the dark side in a sense <laughs> uh, yes uh, so that's one uh, moment when Coben uh, broke the rules uh, of his deal with the dream wizard and uh, uh, that's what uh, leads to his eventual punishment in this movie but uh, uh, yes uh, he uh, brought Brandy into the dream world uh, with feelings and emotions, which is uh, said to be against the rules. And I actually have to say that's one detail that uh, somewhat confused me in the movie. Like, uh, it said that uh, people in the dream world are not supposed to feel anything, but uh, uh, that kind of confuses me because uh, usually in our dreams we do experience emotions, which is why dreams impact us in the first place. Very true. I mean, uh, whenever, uh, whenever you or uh, or me uh, are dreaming or or whatnot, and I'm sure everyone else has had a dream of some sort, whether it's a nightmare or, or uh, something of that nature. Uh, uh, you feel uh, things very much like you would in the real world. So, in actuality, I think it was more or le uh, less... Uh, 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 well, let's look at the character of Tarnia, played by Sh uh, Shannon Barksdale. Uh, um, yes. she, she was supposed to have be uh, been Paul's dream lover, or dream wife, or the woman of his dreams. Uh, uh, yes. As uh, if you're any kind of a male, you always have some kind of a a dream wife, that uh, uh, or a dream woman. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that, that you always want to be with. Uh, so, um, looking at her character in the dream world, the dream world where Mig is involved, she doesn't have any emotions when Paul arrives. Uh, so when Co uh, Coban eventually entices uh, and takes Brandy over into his world once again, um, that is when Tarnia actually follows and he, uh, he says, well, if you come into my world, you're going to have feelings. You're going to, uh, you're going to feel hurt. You're going to fe uh, feel all of that. You're gonna feel yes. like uh, like a human does. Y yes, and uh, that's a very. She was a uh, in the world of Mig. She was an FOB, and why don't you tell me what an FOB is? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, an acronym for a figment of beauty. So she is. Uh... Uh, she is like a, a character created by Wig uh, specifically for Paul's dreams. So, as far as we were told, uh, during those dreams when she was recurringly appearing to Paul, it was uh, Wig sending him, sending Tarnia to him and uh, 
probably as she doesn't have emotions, Mig was the one controlling her behavior and uh, uh, that was what uh, Paul originally fell in love with. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, she didn't really have emotions of her own until uh, uh, Coleman tricked her into uh, going to his side of the dream world. And, uh, uh, well, well, and I'll be honest, uh, this is actually my second viewing of the film. I actually watched this with my um, fiance last night, and um, she actually liked it somewhat. She she thought it was kind of slow, and I, I agree, it is kind of slow. It, it, it is mm. a slow watch, uh, 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 where it pans slowly. Um, but in my experience with independent film, um, oftentimes because of low budgeting, films can be told slowly. Whew. Well, I personally didn't get the impression that it was too slow. It was fine to me. <laughs> well, um, like I said, it's, uh, uh, well, at least in my, uh, in my mind, it is a little slow. Uh, but um, to me, I... I really liked the slowness of it, and uh, I, I liked the way that the storytelling was told. I think that the writing was done really well on this film. It um, did. I think the locations were pretty decent for um, what the they were trying to portray. Because uh, uh, for uh, for some reason, uh, how she was up on that table, uh, uh, Tarnia, laying oh, on that yes. table. It kind of reminded me of watching the Chronicles of Narnia, where uh, where, uh, oh. uh, where Aslan was uh, was tied up on the ta uh, 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 table and his uh, his mane was cut. Uh, for so, uh, some reason, I just kept thinking of that moment because uh, the BBC uh, theatrical production did uh, did those movies, but Walt Disney went and redid them. Um, for movies and um to, uh, to me whenever i think of a long slab of table i think of, <laughs> i think of that particular uh a, a scene um whoa <laughs> for some reason i don't know why i don't know if you know uh, know the fil uh, uh, film or know, uh, know the stories or uh, of of Narnia. Narnia. But... Well, I uh, I saw some Narnia movies uh, uh, quite a long time ago, so I don't really have a clear memory of them. But uh, I uh, I somewhat remember this uh, thing with uh, Aslan <laughs> that you mentioned, but it didn't really cross my mind while I was watching this movie. <laughs> Well, that's what I was uh, was thinking of when, uh, 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 when I was wa watching. Uh, uh, watching. It's not that it has any relation uh, to it or whatnot, uh, uh, but um, I like how. Um, well, let's get back to um, Paul. Um, so Paul was uh, trying to record his dreams. Now, on that particular occasion that uh, the the uh, the in the synopsis told us um he somehow rolled over in a sl uh, uh, when he was trying to sleep and accidentally yes. bumped his machinery and somehow that transported him to the dream world uh yes and uh, he <coughs> accidentally pressed some button on the machine and it uh, somehow got him uh, stuck in the dream world and unable to wake up, which was uh, probably also why he was uh, able to uh, able to perceive his feelings and emotions in the dream, which, according to me, he wasn't supposed to be able to do, but... Uh, uh, that uh, that probably uh, had to do with each other being stuck in the dream world and being able to experience emotions. It was an anomaly for uh, that world, and Definitely. that was 
Definitely. Um, now, somehow, Paul ended up in a nightmare trap or nightmare pit. Um, yes. <laughs> which is a, a recurring, repeating nightmare, uh, um, evidently, where he gets stuck in several different um, scenarios. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, what did you think of the different scenarios? Well, uh, they were quite interesting, and uh, I uh, I also liked uh, the props in those scenarios, especially in the the first one with those two girls with uh, tw tweety sleepers. That was a fun detail I noticed, but uh, that uh, that wasn't so important. But these. Uh, board games they had uh, i found out they were whole way they aren't real board games and <laughs> if you look closely you can see pictures from other uh, john bowker and joe sherlock movies on them so that was a pretty cool detail and uh, as you probably know my favorite uh, nightmare scenario was the one with Shelley, Felicia Pandolfi's character. <laughs> Not surprising, right? <laughs> she she was quite sassy for that uh, uh, for that role, wasn't she? Um, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, uh, what happens is after uh, after these two young girls uh, try to play, uh, 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 well, uh, the games that they were trying to play was the first one was murder. Where, <laughs> uh, evidently, evidently, the object of the game was not to die, um, but uh, but he did not know that Paul uh, uh, the, uh, what they were playing. So th they decided to play another game called Shutter. Uh, yes, uh, the, the point <laughs> you were supposed that... to not shudder at all. Yeah, so they were uh, pulling cards out and uh, reading on them what they had to do. And uh, Paul was supposed to stay calm, not to get scared, but uh, he wasn't very good at it from what we saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, evidently there are ways for him to escape these scenarios. Um, so when he went from one to another, um, the next one and just so happened to be the uh, uh, the room where uh, apparently Shelley is a vampire in in here, uh, yeah, or yes. or a demon like a uh, person, but he also comes across another version of Tarnia. Yeah, uh, supposedly a woman who looks like Tarnia but isn't her, and uh, uh, she gets offended when Paul calls her Tardia. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, one thing I really found interesting about this scene with uh, Shelley and Tardia's look-alike is when, uh, when Paul first gets there, uh, uh, Shelley does not act violent at first. She is just playing darts and uh, she's not trying to hurt Paul. And when he asks how come... Uh, She's not doing anything to him. She says it's because Coleman is on a bathroom break and not controlling her at the moment. <laughs> it was something I found pretty funny as uh, the story of this movie is otherwise pretty serious, but then they had a detail like this, like uh, a nightmare figure who is supposed to be there to try to kill Paul isn't doing anything because... Uh, uh, Coburn is uh, in the bathroom <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I found that uh, pretty funny. I find and... that pretty funny too, and I almost wonder if that was ad libbed and possible that uh, the actor uh, Rob Mar Miracle may have actually had to go to the bathroom on set, <laughs> and they just played along with it or something like that. It made me think that uh, you know. Well, maybe he had to quickly go to the bathroom or something like that, and they had to ad lib something in there to be funny, or something well, like that. It could have well, been. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> actors do need to go to the bathroom from time to time. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, 
uh, one thing I found very memorable from this scene is when uh, Shelley tells uh, Paul, dear, if I wanted to kill you, as she's playing darts, dear, <laughs> if I wanted to kill you, I would have made a shish kebab out of your eyeball. I found that very funny too. <laughs> <laughs> I found that pretty funny, uh, funny too. Now, in the next uh, uh, scene, um, after this, um, th there's a very interesting scene where a bunch of arms and hands come up on to a bed uh, and try to grab him from uh, the, uh, the bed or something like that. Is isn't that what happens next? Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, I think. Uh... That uh, scene with zombie heads was uh, before Shelley, after those two girls at board games. Okay, okay. Uh, um, now that scene, uh, scene, that is the scene, uh, that is within the one scene that, uh, that uh, this is my only, this is my only negative thing that I have to say about this uh, film. Because th uh, there is a moment where you actually see the person behind the one hand. In the far right corner, you actually get to see their nose and their mouth on the edge of the screen. Well, I did, uh, well, I'm Which going takes... to have to check that I didn't <laughs> notice it somehow. It was, I think it was kind of a fuck up, uh, <laughs> and it and it did uh, kind of take away from the illusion that they were zombies, just <laughs> for a moment. But you don't see the full face; you just see. Part of the nose and the mouth. Whoa. Uh, um, at, uh, in the right uh, a, a hand corner, and uh, you'll you'll see what I mean when you go uh, uh, go and watch it again. But uh, but yes, it is uh, it is it is. I think it was a fuck up, but you know you're gonna have that happen from time to time on a low budget. So I'm uh, going to for I'm going to myself forgive it because. Well, <laughs> I forgive it too, especially because I have seen the movie four or five, four or five times, and I haven't noticed it somehow. So, yeah, I'll forgive it too. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is, it is a fun film because I, I like how it didn't just leave you with, uh, with, uh, you know, him just going, uh, uh, going ho uh, home and nothing hap uh, happening. I like how it had a happy ending at the, at the very end. Um, uh, yeah. So um, after um, after uh, the scene with Shelley, uh, with uh, 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 Miss Pandolfi. Um, yes. Wh um, what happens is he ends up in a hallway, uh, 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 and at the end of the hallway is uh, a young woman zombie who is laying on the floor. And he walks away from it, and it starts to chase him. And when he tries to leave from the hallway, he and go upstairs. He it seems like he just he, it keeps come, uh, uh, going to the same spot over and over. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, like you said about the other zombie scene. Uh... Uh, where you were uh, bothered by uh, this part of someone's face being seen in this uh, other zombie scene you mentioned with uh, this zombie girl uh, I thought uh, that scene went for a little too long so I think that's uh, my only complaint about the movie but it was still interesting uh, in a way especially the moment when uh, the zombie girl's uh, arm emerges from a computer screen, which uh, reminded me of the movie The Ring, which is one of my favorite horror movies. And I the, found it especially... The Japanese version or the uh, the American remake? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually like both. I used to be a huge fan of the Ring franchise. I saw all the movies. Uh, but this one, uh, this scene in Dreamwalkers, I think it uh, reminded me more of the American version because uh, Samara in the American version looked uh, much more zombie-like than Sadako in the Japanese version. <laughs> and uh, 
I especially found this interesting because uh, the ring, uh, at least the American version, did not exist yet when Dreamwalkers was made. <laughs> and uh, the Japanese version, as far as I know, John Bowker had not seen it before making this movie, so it was really interesting to me. And uh, this whole part when this uh, when the zombie girl is uh, messing with Paul's memories and uh, trying to make him think that it was him who killed her. I think she was laughing a little bit too long to me uh, yes. for, uh, for, uh, for some reason it's it, it's not that the, the uh, I get I get the fact that every time he tried to escape uh, it ended up being like the same it, he couldn't escape where he was um, but, uh, yes. uh, but, uh, but to me there was no reason to ha have her keep on screaming <laughs> uh, well uh, one thing I noticed in the ending credits of the movie uh, it says that uh, this particular nightmare scene with this zombie girl was uh, apparently inspired by a real nightmare by Yvette Sherlock, uh, Joe Sherlock's wife. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so maybe that was what happened in the real nightmare. So maybe that's why it happened that way in the movie. I don't know for certain, but could be. <laughs> <laughs> Very possible. And uh, one thing I ought to, ought to mention is that uh, the zombie in this particular nightmare scene was played by Kylene Weatherell, which uh, yes. um, not too recently uh, we went on about a different film by uh, John Bowker called yes, Housebound, uh, and she was one of the main characters there. Uh, yes, uh, yes, she was. And, uh... Uh, she was uh, she was actually quite beautiful in other movies, so it was surprising to see her with this terrifying zombie makeup here. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, after um, after the, uh, uh, this um, scene, tell us what happens. So, uh, as far as I understood, uh, Paul. Uh, stepped somewhere where Coba didn't plan him to go and he found himself in uh, another nightmare ambience with uh, the, with a new character called Tammy played by Kimberly Bowker and uh, Tammy was not uh, a dream creation she was a, a real person also brought to the dream world uh, probably by Coba and, and uh, he and his creations were also this, torturing her this, in the nightmare. This nightmare, um, nightmare kind of reminded me of like uh, what I would consider like an out-of-body experience, almost, uh, or oh. or even an alien abduction kind of uh, an experience where, where <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, the, those creatures kind of look like aliens and uh, and uh, that table that she was on looked like an experimental table. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, now that you say that uh, it is a little similar from, uh, a little similar to uh, a scene from Joe Sherlock's Odd Doggins, uh, which also had to do with alien abduction. Uh, oh, you think it's a scene from one of Sherlock's, uh, uh, Joe Sherlock's films? Uh, no, the scene in Odd Loggins was different, with different actors and everything, but now when you pointed this out, uh, story-wise, uh, there are some similarities. Okay. Um, and uh, now, what, now, instead of the, the young girl, Tammy, um, going and dealing with these characters, it seems he put himself in harm's way for this girl um, uh, uh, when they when they actually came um, and uh, and that's how he got out of that world uh, or that nightmare sequence correct uh, yes yes uh, that was when he found himself in the final encounter with Coban which Coban in his evilness oh yes 
brought about a a syringe of poison and and had both his best friend and his uh dream wife um on either side of him and was trying to make him choose which uh, one to uh, that he was apparently supposed to poison so uh, what do you think about his final choice well uh, that was a uh, very intense scene and it uh, really shows how sinister Colbert is and it really uh, it can really make the viewer hate his character for what he does. It's uh, it's actually something that one could uh, do to someone in real life too, and it's probably one of the most horrible things that could happen to someone. But uh, uh, Paul uh, didn't even think twice before saying, don't kill them, kill me instead. And uh, it was... Uh, it was a very impacting scene, and it showed uh, uh, it showed uh, Coban being really merciless because he said he was going to kill Paul anyway, but before killing him, he wanted to make him suffer by forcing him to choose between his uh, best friend and uh, the woman he loves, and. Uh, uh, it, it could be expected that if uh, Paul uh, refused to make a choice that Coban would kill them both. So, although it wasn't said, but it is something a mind like his would probably come up with. Uh... Now, before we go on, there, uh, there was some music that was uh, 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 playing throughout the whole film. Um, that I wanted to mention, uh, and yes. I want to say that I like the music uh, for this film as well. The uh, the sort of it, it seems like it's lighthearted um, music. Well, in a way, yeah, it uh, is a bit more lighthearted than the music in other John Bowker's movies. More, more like uh, folk, more like folk music in a sense. Uh, yeah, I would say it, uh, it, it actually does a good job at uh, reflecting the atmosphere of the movie, like this uh, fantasy world with uh, this uh, little dose of suspense and horror. It, <laughs> uh, I, I liked the music too. Um, moving on to... Uh, so, this final scene, uh, in fact... Uh, um, was brought back to us in the real wor uh, world with Brandy's question to Paul. Uh, uh, so which one of us would you have chosen? Uh, and uh, his response was that, uh, uh, don't you remember? I chose yeah. myself. Uh, yes. Well, it was a very interesting and very clever response from Paul, in my opinion, because... Uh, the fact that uh, he didn't say, I would choose you, I would have chosen you, somewhat implies that he would have chosen Tarnia if he really had to, but uh, he handled it uh, pretty well, so he uh, hugged her and uh, thus uh, let her know that she was important to him as well, but he obviously didn't want to dwell much further on the topic, so he pointed out that uh, he chose uh, his own death over having to choose for one of them to die. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know by now, we uh, we were and are, uh, are and have a, a spoiler alerts in this. Uh, um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, if you have listened to us thus far, uh, then go back and watch the movie and gain your own opinion from this film before you go any further. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, moving on to... Uh, now, what did you think of the punishment that was dealt to Coban um, well... from the Dream Wizard? Uh, I think it was uh, uh, 
uh, well deserved. So as far as we saw, he really otherwise enjoyed his job of creating nightmares and torturing people in them, and he got suspended for three months, which, uh, well, in a way it was well deserved, but on the <laughs> other hand, maybe it uh, wasn't really strong enough of a punishment as he really tried to kill people. And, well, uh, which reminds me, there there is a scene that um, uh, uh, where um, this uh, this is where I think he kind of first uh, after he gets into the dream world, he comes acro across uh, something that's underneath uh, a, a, a like somewhere, and there is a woman that is tied to a post, and he unties the woman, and she thanks him for uh, uh, and. He just tells her to wake up, you know. Why, why don't you just wait, uh, uh, wake up instead of trying to escape from he, uh, from he, uh, here the way you were, you know? Because uh, she's mm. only dreaming. Yes, uh, but, uh, yes. But he, when he meets, uh, <laughs> when he meets Coban, he's in a Jason mask. Uh, yes, with, yes. Uh, with a chainsaw, chainsaw. and yeah. uh, so I guess in a sense. They're kind of um, giving kind of a uh, uh, a send off to Friday the Thirteenth and Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the same time because <laughs> when he when he puts that chainsaw above his head, he does that dance that uh, um, uh, Leatherface does in Texas Chainsaw. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty good scene, uh, especially when uh, uh, the woman is trying to uh, go out, but like there is some uh, invisible uh, invisible <laughs> shield preventing her from leaving. It's uh, it's something I can kind of imagine happening in a nightmare. Uh, Definitely. So uh, as a whole. Um, what do you what do you take from this film? Was it giving some kind of a message? Uh, well, uh, in a metaphorical way, maybe it. Uh, I think it's trying to say that we should never give up on our dreams because uh, we never know how and when they might come true. After all, okay, maybe not quite the way it happened in this movie, but. Uh, in some more realistic way, yes. Uh, so, at the end of the movie, uh, due to this whole situation turning out the way it did, uh, Mig uh, asks the Dream Wizard for permission to send Tarnia into the real world so she and Paul can be properly together. And, uh, and uh, it happens, so... Uh, they do stay together, and they we see Ming standing aside and saying, uh, "In my business, sometimes dreams really do come true." So, I think that's supposed to tell the viewer not to give up on their dreams and to uh, and to fight for what they want in their lives. I agree. I, I mean, I think that um, some people out there. Um, tend to th uh, th uh, uh, tend to let their dreams go, uh, instead of trying to um, succeed and uh, make some of their dreams, I in fact, come true. Um, but um, going backwards just a little, a little a bit, there was some minor CGI moments in this uh, 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 film where there was some lightning um, oh. effect um, of some sort. For, uh, for um, uh, Coban Col yes, at first, uh, and then Co uh, Coban again, except uh, uh, disguised as Mig when he was trying uh, uh, that little funny moment where uh, where <laughs> he, he kept getting zapped uh, because he couldn't come to the safe zone. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, there were there were some uh, lightning effects in that scene where. Uh, it kind of looked like he was dancing through the lightning <laughs> bolts while trying to break into Ming's safe zone. But uh, yeah, it was enough to 
full uh, brandy and tardy ought to go after him. Well, uh, but yeah, not necessarily Tarnia, because he was trying to tell Brandy, come back, come back. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're right. I forgot. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, another interesting uh, CGI moment was when uh, uh, Paul and Brandy brought uh, uh, Tarnia back to Mig's world after Coben killed her, and. Uh, uh, Mig put something like uh, a golden watch on her forehead. Oh, yeah, and... that's right. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of like a disco ball uh, <laughs> light coming yeah. out uh, in all those dots to, uh, to show the magic that was being performed. Uh, yeah, maybe it, uh, it didn't look uh, very realistic, but I still uh, thought it was a pretty cool effect with these... Uh, colorful uh, spheres uh, uh, flying around the screen and uh, the fact that uh, there was a watch on uh, her forehead uh, uh, during uh, that moment it uh, it kind of implies that uh, Mig was uh, uh, turning the time back for her body to change it back to the state it was in before Coleman yeah, injected either, her with poison. Either. Either that, or he, or Mig was just showing uh, uh, us his disco inferno days. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, in any case, um, I think uh, I think that this w uh, was a pretty decent film for the time that it came uh, it came out, and uh, I thought it was a pretty decent story uh, storyline. It could have it can be slow to some people. Okay, um, the effects. Okay, so uh, so you're uh, so you're uh, you're used to some people are used to seeing effects better than this, but I think it was decent for its time period. Uh, I agree. Yes, uh, I am uh, personally quite uh, tolerant to that sort of things because uh, I uh, I know that independent filmmakers uh, are doing their best and. Even if it's uh, not quite realistic, it's still the best they could have done, and they put a lot of effort into it, and I can recognize it and appreciate it. Sure, so. too. I, I mean, you you have to have uh, an imagination and an open mind for these kind of films, and uh, uh, th 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 that's what you have to have for some of these outlandish independent uh, uh, films and this one wasn't really outlandish it was more dreams uh, uh, dreamy and dreams uh, 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 dr uh, dreamlike uh, indeed. <laughs> indeed literally <laughs> so um in any case hopefully you uh, folks out there have enjoyed our um discussion on this uh, uh, the, uh, this film I mean, there there were some likes and dislikes on on my on my end, of course. On uh, your end, Boris, you entirely liked it, um, yeah, and pretty you much, it. yes. Um, but uh, but um, go ahead and go back and uh, uh, actually, you can you can buy it from Joe Sherlock himself from SpellfaceAstronaut.com. And yeah, uh, no, it can be bought. <laughs> And uh, pick it up for yourself and uh, check it out for your own um, uh, 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 for your own self. And whether you enjoy um, a fantasy realm that is not quite unlike our own. So uh, thank you for listening. Hopefully you, like I said, enjoyed our discussion on this. Uh, I I enjoy going through each of these uh, films bit by uh, by bit and telling it in our own voice in our own opinion because e you have an opinion that's different from mine and i i have thoughts of it uh, uh, my, uh, my, myself and uh, not many people have probably gone through some of these films and and uh, actually gone and discussed them in detail like we have so uh, indeed, I must say, I do think these movies, especially John Bowker's and Joe Sherlock's movies, they deserve a lot more attention than they get, so... 
Well, I appreciate you coming on uh, with me and uh, talking with uh, me about uh, about, about the, uh, these uh, uh, films. I mean, this one I did watch before, uh, but uh, uh, but the last two that we've gone on about, I did not watch as of yet. So uh, so I thank you for giving me <laughs> giving me a reason to uh, go and wa uh, watch the, uh, uh, them and discuss them um, in their own well. right. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you for <laughs> giving me this opportunity to discuss uh, this movie and the other ones we have discussed before. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> and, uh, you probably imagine I don't really have uh, many people I can discuss it with, so I always enjoy doing this with you. Well, I enjoy doing it with uh, with you too. Uh, so. Um, ladies and gentlemen, next week I'm going to, uh, since I've gone on with three uh, films that he enjoys, I'm going to um, share with Boris and uh, whoever else we can get uh, get to come on with us. Um, to, uh, uh, we're going to enjoy another discussion, and I have no problem discussing this film with anyone. Uh, it's my fa uh, favorite all-time number one film. It's called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to watching that one. Uh, you have praised it a lot, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's about and uh, why you like it so much. And to be <laughs> honest, I trust your tastes. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, I think it'll definitely be up your alley, and it's definitely a strange one indeed. So, oh, nice. <laughs> in, in any case, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to uh, to our ramblings, and uh, um, just go, uh, go out and, uh, and watch it uh, again. Dreamwalkers by John Bowker. So yeah. uh, you can pick it up at uh, SkullfaceAstronaut dot com. Go ahead and pick it up for yourselves. Thank you so much. Indeed, you, you should. You should. It's a great movie. In any case, say good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>